Okay, so let's review some typical examples for substitutions. Uh, so what we want to find is going to be what should come as an equivalent to the dx dy or dx dy dz, depending on the kind of substitutions we're doing. And these are, well, results you have to know by heart and also to know how to find again by heart. Okay, so let's begin with a very standard one that I guess you all uh, remember from last year, or if not, well, that's the time for it. Uh, let's do the um, polar coordinates. All right, so uh, we have uh, this transformation, which is giving you, so x is equal to rho cosine of theta, y is equal to rho sinus of theta, and that's really the, the kind of, uh, the way we uh, gave uh, the substitution formula. So we have something phi of rho and theta gives you x and y. So what we should come is with something that's going to tell you dx dy is equal. So I, I just use quotes or, sorry, or, uh, around the dx dy because that's, uh, well, you, you, you understand that the equality is, um, means the abstract notion of this small area dx dy should be substituted in uh, our uh, integral notation by, so we get, uh, the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian matrix of phi times d rho d theta. Okay, and probably you remember that's going to be rho. So you have to be able to redo that very, very quickly and very easily. So that just tells you we write the Jacobian matrix of phi. So uh, you get so x dx over d rho dy over d rho, sorry, dx over d theta, dy over d theta. Okay, so according to my notations, so that's going to be, so cosine theta, uh, dx over d theta, that's going to be minus rho, sinus of theta. Down there we get um, sinus of theta and rho cosine of theta. So that if we do the determinant of this Jacobian matrix, we get rho cos square minus minus rho, uh, so that makes a plus rho sine square. So which gives you applying Pythagorean theorem equals to rho. Okay, and as rho is always positive, that's nice. All right, so you have to remember this formula by heart, and you see to find it again, it takes you about two seconds, and that's also something you have to be able to do. Okay, uh, just here you've got an illustration of what it means to transform one domain uh, in, in Cartesian coordinates into one domain in polar coordinates, and it's going to be uh, very useful when you have to um, describe domains like this in terms of Cartesian coordinates that would be quite hard to describe well quite hard not too uh, easy you would have to describe the two lines uh, with the angle alpha and beta and you would have to describe the portions of the uh, uh, of the um, the circle uh, that are have radius b and a, okay. Whereas, well, if it does, if it's interesting, if it rearranges well, this kind of uh, domain becomes just a square in terms of polar coordinates. That means that the uh, radius belongs is going to be between a and b, and the angle. Well, here, sorry, the angle was denoted phi, but it's the same idea. The angle uh, would be between two angles alpha and beta. Okay, so that's what we will do some example of applications of that a bit later. Of course, we shouldn't stop um, here. Let's go to cylindrical and spherical coordinates at least. Okay, so uh, maybe I didn't stress that enough in the previous uh, video, but the formula we obtained uh, was is absolutely extensible to any dimensions. That means it can go from, or if you have a, a substitution from R to R2, or, or a substitution for R3 to R3, or from Rn to Rn. That still is going to work. Um, by the way, you understand that we need 
uh, in order to have a valid substitution, uh, we must have something that is going to be invertible. And one of the requirements is that the Jacobin matrix is invertible. And minimum we can ask is that this is a square matrix. Otherwise, it's uh, never going to be invertible. Right. And uh, so we need, if we're considering Rn, it has to have image in Rn. OK, uh, this being said, let's have a look at the um, cylindrical coordinates here again. No problem, because uh, I'm, I'm going to use the notations with rho and phi for the angle. So x is given by rho, cosine of phi, y is given by uh, rho, sinus of phi and z. Well, it's just z. That's the cylindrical coordinates. So we again write the Jacobian of this transformation. So let's not use the letter phi as it's already been used for the angle. So the Jacobian matrix is going to be so dx over d rho, dx over d phi, uh, dx over dz. Okay, we have a third one now. You can put them in any other you want, right? The thing is that it might change the uh, the sinus the sorry the sign of the uh, the uh, the determinant, but in the end, as we take the absolute value, it's not going to change the value of the absolute value of the determinant. Okay, so you can put these uh, partial derivatives in any order you want. Uh, just be consistent. Second line: dy over d rho, dy over d phi dy over dz and then dz over d rho, dz over d phi and dz over dz. All right. Uh, so basically what we're going to get is exactly the same as before for the first uh, square. This one, that's just exactly what we had for the polar coordinates. All right. So we get um, cosine phi. We get minus uh, rho sinus of phi, so we get uh, sinus of phi, and we get rho cos of phi, and then the x over dz, well, it doesn't depend on z at all, so zero, same thing for dy over dz, z, that's zero, and then dz over d rho, zero, zero, and one. Okay, good thing is that if you have a uh, if you want to compute the uh, determinant of this one, it's just going to be trivial because if you expand using uh, the last line, I don't know how you oh yeah, I know how you, you compute the determinant. So whichever way you want, but if I'm doing the expansion according to a rule, specific rule or column, whatever, that's going to get plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, so that's going to be a plus one. One times the determinant of the uh, uh, smaller uh, the submatrix given by this one. So that's sinus of phi rho cosine of phi, and that we get again one times rho. Okay, so in when we are in cylindrical coordinates, you have that dx dy should be substituted by sorry, dx, dy, dz, it's really going to be substituted by rho, d, uh, rho, d, phi, dz. Okay, so easy. All right, it's the same one as before, plus a dz. So it's really uh, very, very simple. Next, spherical coordinates. Okay, so now for the spherical coordinates. All right, so let's try this. Oh, by the way, at each time in those videos, you may pause and do it by yourselves. Okay, so if you want to write the whole stuff by yourself from, from now on or from a bit later, just feel free to pause and do your own calculations. All right, so let's do it on, on here. So X should be equal with the notations uh, that I see on the graph. Should be equal to um, so we get rho times uh, the sinus of phi to get the projection uh, of this uh, in the xy plane times the cosine of theta. 
Okay, y is going to be so first thing is uh, exactly the same rule sinus of y that gives you the projection on the xy plane times the sinus of theta. Okay, and then we have the z that should be given by uh, the rule cosine uh, of uh, phi. Okay, so again, we're going to uh, write the Jacobian matrix of this transformation. Feel free to pause and write your own matrix and do maybe the calculation. I'll just come back before you, if you want to check the matrix. So, uh, on my side, Jacobian matrix is going to be given. So, the x over d rho, the x over d phi, the x over d theta, dy over d rho, dy over d phi, dy over d theta, and I get. Um, dz over d rho, dz over d phi, dz over d theta. Okay, good. So that's giving me. Uh, so it's going to be huge. Sinus phi cos theta. Then uh, with respect to phi, we get minus minus rho. Um, sorry, plus rho, cos phi, cos theta, and then we get dx over d theta, that's uh, minus rho, sine phi, uh, and then sine theta. Okay, second rho, uh, we get dy over d rho, that's just going to be sinus of phi, Sinus of theta uh, with respect to phi, that's rho, cos phi, tan theta, and by with respect to theta, that's rho, sine phi, and cos theta. Good. And finally, for the last rho, we get dz over d rho, that's obviously cosine of phi dz over d phi, that's going to be minus rho sinus of phi, and the rho dz over d theta, that's going to be zero. Okay, so now you can uh, compute the determinant with um, whichever method you want. I'm going to use my favorite one, which is uh, with cosines, that's plus, minus, plus, cosine of phi times the determinant that I get when I'm looking at this uh, matrix here. So that's uh, rho cos phi cos theta minus rho sine phi sinus theta rho cos uh, phi sinus of theta rho sinus of phi cosine of theta Okay, minus minus, so that makes a plus rho sinus of phi times, well, what I get, let me uh, just try, so that makes a plus sinus rho sinus of phi of the matrix where I've got this and that. All right, so that's going to be sine phi cos theta, uh, we get minus rho sinus of phi sinus of theta sinus of phi sinus of theta and rho sinus of phi cosine of theta okay and then we just have to expand the whole stuff okay so that's determinant of j uh, that's equal to plus phi so rho square uh, we've got uh, sine phi, cos phi, and cos theta square. So I did this times that. Minus, minus, that, that's a plus. Rho square again. Um, sine phi, sine theta square, and cos phi. Okay, plus rho sinus of phi times. So I get rho sine phi 
uh, square, cos theta square, minus minus the next so plus, rho, sine phi square, uh, sine theta square, sorry, that was a phi, sine theta square. Okay, now expanding again. I'm just going on the expansion. So we get rho square sine phi times cos square phi cos square theta plus rho square sine phi uh, sine square theta cos square phi. Okay. And then I get plus rho square. So I get sine phi. I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, yeah, let's let's keep it that way. Uh, I've got, I, I can factor even further inside. Uh, I mean, I've got, so the rho, I already used that. I've got sine phi square. So that makes sine cube times um, cosine square of theta plus sine square of theta. So that's going to simplify using Pythagorean theorem into one. And I can do something very similar over there. I can get uh, rho square. So I get some sine phi. And I get some, what is the common stuff here? I get the cos phi square. Okay, this one and this one. And what's remaining is the cos square phi. Oh, so sorry, the cos square theta, all right. That was the one I had before. So this is the one I'm using, sorry. No, this is the one I'm using. Uh, okay, so cos square theta plus sine square of theta. So that's going to also make a one. Okay, and I've got rho square sine cube of phi. And that's equal to, all right, I can factor again. Um, rho, I've got rho square sinus of phi times, I've got cos square of phi plus sinus square of phi. Okay, and again, that gives you a one. So that in the end, we get rho square sinus of phi okay so that's the result you have both to be able to remember and to be able to recalculate okay so it's long calculations you know that in the end it should uh, simplify a lot so that's that's a good exercise for you to try again so what do we get we get that um, dx dy dz will be substituted in the integral by rho square sinus of phi and that's correct if you take uh, phi between zero and pi the sinus is just going to be positive and that's that's fine so you we don't need any absolute values so remember that phi should be between zero and pi all right and uh, so that's it so d rho d phi d theta Okay, so again, this you have to know by heart and to know how to find it again.